Hello, my name's Dale Gibson and I'm the director of Beecraft who's been organising this year's Beecraft Lectures. And what we've really tried to do this year is to make the National Honey Show's Beecraft Lectures really relevant to everyday beekeeping. So we've selected topics which are absolutely key for beekeepers, whether they're beginners or whether they're very experienced beekeepers. So starting off the lecture at nine o'clock is Jack Silberad, who's a seasonal bee inspector. He'll be talking about his experiences fighting the Asian Hornet and fighting EFB in Cambridgeshire. Second up, we have Lynn Ingram, who is a master beekeeper from Somerset. He's going to talk to us about honey adulteration. If fake honey drives down the price of honey in global markets, the fate of beekeepers around the world is going to be challenged and in the end um, only bad things can happen. That's uh, something to talk about right after this brief introduction because Lynn is right here sitting next to me now. The other person who's going to be really relevant, let's jump straight over the lunchtime session with the two editors talking back to our Beecraft readers and then the Beecraft readers talking back to them, which is going to be fun. But on to the next person who's going to be talking as a, 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 an experienced speaker. That's Dr. Beth Nichols. She's talking about her work at Sussex University, bringing science into bee behaviour and bringing science through bee behaviour into how we can affect that uh, decline of pollinators by actually taking information from her experiments. And then finally, we have Richard Knoll. He's going to be starting at three o'clock talking about the Asian Hornet. He's been working in France with the Asian Hornet for years now and has a wealth of experience to communicate to us because we're going to need it very soon. So, so here, here we, we are, are at the National Honey Show. There's nothing more important to talk about than honey. And here today we have Lynn Ingram, who is the person who represents the Honey Authenticity Network as chair and is a master beekeeper herself and has enormous authority and knowledge about honey fraud. And that's an existential threat for all beekeepers. And so let's hear from Lynn how this all works out. Thanks, Dale. Thanks for that introduction and also the introduction to the whole day because I think there's all sorts of really interesting speakers. So I'm definitely going to be listening to everyone else. Fantastic. <laughs> um, so yes, honey fraud, as you say, it's a massive issue. So honey is the second most adulterated food in the world, second only now to dairy products. And it's a huge issue. It um, is undermining the businesses of honey producers all over the world. And so the concern, of course, is that that's going to be happening in the UK and what that means to us as beekeepers, what that means to the commercial beekeepers as well. And what that means in the long term for our food production, because actually if there's less managed bees doing pollination of food, does that mean that we will then have even less uh, variety of food um, to choose from? So it's a massive issue. And of course, the other thing is that the consumer is being deceived. Um, they aren't buying what they think they're buying. They think they're buying honey, and actually what they might be buying is honey that's been diluted with syrups, for example. Uh, so it's, it is a huge issue. And um, most recently, the EU did a huge study with 18 countries involved. Obviously, we're not in the EU anymore. But what they did was to actually monitor and test 320 consignments of honey that were going into the EU. And of those, 46% were found to be adulterated with syrups. So it's a massive issue. And obviously, lots of investigations are going on into those countries, into the importers, into the exporters. Um, Unfortunately, several, I think 13 consignments of British honey that was going into the EU was found to be adulterated. Actually, it probably wasn't British, it might have been a foreign honey, but exported and processed by British um, packers or exporters. So it's a huge issue. So what I'm hoping to do tomorrow is to raise awareness of this issue, to really give a picture of what's happening. What is this adulteration? You know, how does it happen? Where is it happening? Who, who's doing it? And to start with a bit of a global, an overview of the whole thing. So is, you know, what's happening around the world and then funneling down to what's happening in the UK. And then starting to think about the impact and actually, is there anything we can do about it? What can we do as beekeepers? Is there anything we can do? Is it down to the government? Is there stuff we can do together? 
in Europe, they're fantastic at doing these amazing sort of demonstrations and yes. big protests, and, and we're, we're a bit more reserved here in the UK, but I'm sure there's something together that we can actually do, because this is a threat to all honey producers. Yes, I think, you know, we, we have anecdotally bee farmers who have growing stocks of honey that mm. they can't sell at economic yeah. prices. Yeah. And, and, and that's the tip of the iceberg. Yes. But it's beginning to show, and yes. um, you know, it's a real concern yes. uh, for our colleagues and bee farmers around the country. Do, do you hear that too from people yes, you talk to? Absolutely, and that's, if you like, how this whole thing works. The prices of this cheap adulterated honey coming into the UK, for example, you know, we import something like fifty-eight thousand tons a year. Um, it's so cheap that what it does means that it undermines the businesses of people who are producing real honey because the people who pack the honey don't want to pay a fair price to, say, British honey producers if they can get honey at a very low price. And so either the British honey producers have to accept an incredibly low price which then puts their business at risk or they don't, no, they don't sell it, which is what you're talking about, having these stocks of honey that are just building up. So it's a very tricky situation and it is about us all raising the awareness of the issue and trying to work with the authorities or the government, the people who uh, do the legislation on this and who perhaps do the testing or don't do the testing, as is the case. I've seen in French supermarkets that they're beginning to put the countries of origin yes. on the front of the bottles, but they don't say the percentage of the honey that comes from each of those countries. No, but that's something in Europe that they're really working on yeah. because that, I think that's important at the moment. Well, over there, but also in Britain, often you'll get on a label a blend of EU or a blend of non-EU honey. So you've no idea where it comes from. It, you know, it could have come from Mars for all you know. And that's the thing, the consumer has no idea what they're buying. So the labelling is a really big issue and that would be a great step forward if they were obliged to put the country of origin and, as you say, the percentage, that would be really helpful as a start. But also we need to have more monitoring, we need to have more testing, we need in the UK to have the use of up-to-date tests that are actually designed to pick up on the things that are used to adulterate honey now. Um, because there's some test used which are great, but they're not designed to detect these bioengineered syrups that are used. I think, I think the, the complexity, complexity of that whole yeah, situation is so great yeah. that you does need a 45 minute yeah. Beecraft lecture to get your arms around it. <laughs> yeah. um, and, and you know, I'm really looking forward to that 11 o'clock slot on Friday the 27th when you'll be there and Lift, lifting the lid on the whole honey fraud issue and um, you know I think people really want to find out about this because it, it impacts their daily life if they're buying the supermarkets, it impacts their daily life if they're keeping bees, it's a food fraud issue and it it's is. a big thing. It's huge, yeah, it's absolutely huge, yeah. Well hopefully everyone will go away energised to do something rather than going away totally depressed about the whole issue so hopefully we can have some great discussions afterwards. And, you know, absolutely. Yeah. I think out in the open is where this needs yes. to be, and that's what we're doing. Yeah. And the more people talking about it, the better. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, we look forward to that 11 o'clock, as I say, yeah. on Friday the 27th. Yeah. Be there and be part of the story. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you.